Well, another test drive here at Maple Motors. We're in Hendersonville, Tennessee, about 15 minutes north of Nashville. And I've got this 1971 Oldsmobile Cutlass sitting here with a 455. You got power steering, power brakes. And we'll be taking her down the road for a test drive. Get that fire cell going on, you hear it? <laughs> Hunter Detail Pictures financing and shipping is available at the end. I'll be picking out the flaws. Chips, scratches, rust, and dents. Dual exhaust. White interior. About that time. Let's go for a ride. Before we take off, look around the interior. Place those bets. Do you think the horn works? I haven't tried it yet, but we will. Little console here. Seats look pretty good. Headliner looks good. A little stainage going on up there. Dash. I like this one. Engine temperature's coming up. Oil pressure's great. A little squeak from the belt there, tight. It's working. Showing 71,000 miles in a 1971. That's cool. <laughs> Wipers. We got anything going on. Wipers are not doing anything. They're not moving. I'm messing with the switch. Turn signals. Flashing in the middle there. Power steering seems to be working good. Plot. No. Lower motor. Lower motor's not really doing anything, guys. Radio. Turn her all the way up. Nothing. Needs a few things. Horn, did you place your bets? It does work. Time to hit the road. All right, guys, here we go. Taking off down the road. Anything that I see, you will know about it. Touchy brakes. I heard one of them kind of lock up a little bit. So that means it's got a little dust on it from sitting. I'm going to ride it a second and try to get the dust off. All right, that should be good. Now we'll get into the gas. Seems to be running pretty good going down the road. Straight as an arrow here. I don't think that passing gear is hooked up getting into our brakes. Real touchy, that back one's still trying to lock up a little bit. Passing gear's not hooked up, but man, she's pulling strong. Tight steering, as soon as I turn, it turns. Speedo is way off. It says we're going 70, we're only running about 45. She feels pretty good going down the road. Engine temperature's right at 200. Oil pressure's right at 25. Once I give it gas, it goes on up to about 35, 45 on the oil pressure. Well, she feels pretty good, really. Um, not seeing a whole lot wrong with the drivetrain. What we're gonna do next is light up the undercarriage and we're gonna check the outside of this car for chips, scratches, rust, and dents. What about that? Just honked. 
something to do with the connection here. I know it works, but it's touching somewhere in there. It's grounding out. <laughs> All right, let's get these outside shots. Make sure y'all looking good. Seems like you are. We are ready to roll. Heading on back to the lot now. Now I can smell a little bit of oil burning off. I think it's leaking from the valve cover and hitting right on the exhaust because it's like right there and it drips right down and you can see a little smoke every once in a while burn off the exhaust. So it might have a valve cover seal that's leaking. I'm gonna say that's what it is right in that area too it's just on the back side here we go going down the road just an in-town cruiser she's not got a highway gear she's straight as an arrow though plenty of pep now i'm circling around that parking lot back there and our engine temperature got up to 210 but it's already back down to 200 as soon as we took off so in my opinion an upgrade of an aluminum radiator would be an advantage for this car that should be all you would need to do. Now, personally, I like electric fans. I put them on, I hardwire them in whenever it comes up to temp. If it goes over 200, the fan kicks on. That's what I like. That's my safety feature when I have my personal cars. I think it's a good idea, but you can do whatever you want. Coming over the bump here, good. 
and that doesn't mean it's overheating we're sitting at 210 right now and i've probably got a 190 thermostat in this one but it's not very hot today either it's at 81 outside well guys i do still smell a little bit of oil burning from that exhaust it probably going to continue to drip and hit it and it's probably still going to end up you know burning off i'm going to be picking out the flaws here in a second i'm going to be looking for chips scratches rust and dents if you stick around to the end of the video that's going to help you out quite a bit you're going to want to know all that stuff I think I should have cut through the parking lot there. <laughs> well, you're stuck here for a little bit. Good deal. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe, share. Picking out the flaws coming up right now. Let's walk this ride. Anything I find, you'll know about it. Coming up to the front end. Front bumper on this one looks all right. Pretty clean, nice and shiny. Little chip there. Headlight bezels look good. Little cracks in the paint on this side. Chips, chip here in the middle. Chips there. Chips on the side here. Here at the bottom. Light little bubbles. You got some cracks in the paint in the back. Bubbles here. See them in the light there, right around that area. There's a line up here in that paint job. A little ding in the door. Scratch, chips. Little scuffs in your trim down here at the bottom. A little ding in your trim there. Pillars got some imperfections. Back window on this one looks pretty good. Coming up on the back bumper. Spots there. Jams. Seal looks pretty good down in your trunk. Let's look around. Pulling this tire over. Gotta firmly shut that trunk lid. There's a little scuff there where somebody missed the keyhole, I assume. Crack here.
Coming down this side. Scuffs. You got some bubbles in the paint. A lot of, a lot of bubbles on this paint here. Chemical peel all over the side. That's where they didn't prep it very well. Chip. Little spots on the side of the door there. See that chemical pill down the side. The paint's not perfect on this one. Same thing, a line on the side here. Ding. A little bit of pitting. Front windshield. Chip here in the middle. Chips right here along the pillar where the drip rail starts where the chrome is supposed to be. And you get a little bit of wavy dings on that chrome trim. Cracking the paint there. Made it around the outside. Let's check out the interior. Chrome peeling off the door there. Chips in your jam. Some buttons missing. That right there needs to be tucked back in and redone before it rips. Needs carpet. See the carpet's older. Almost doesn't make make it under the back seat, does it? So guys, I try to go over everything. If there's something that I may have missed that you want to see again and you're serious about buying the car, give us a call. We'll make more videos and send them to you. We do it all the time. Um, just for serious customers because I know you're going to have some questions I may have missed. There's a lot to cars, so I get it. It's okay. I'll start this one up. Right at 210 of course they'll rise a little bit when you cut them off it shouldn't go up any more than that uh, but I did notice it was at 210 earlier and I've been watching it we do have a fan shroud on this one and the only thing that could help it even better is upgrading to an aluminum radiator changing the thermostat and putting an electric fan on there I did all three of those on my personal car and that thing stays as cold as I want it to They do got a big block here. They do produce a lot of heat. 
And a lot of time they'll they'll run a 190 thermostat. A little spark on this valve cover. I noticed there was an oil leak from the valve cover, I believe, on the back side, and it was getting on the exhaust when they pulled it up. It, it burned off fairly quick, but it did happen, and I want you to know about that. They got the braided fuel line. Through the holes they cut out for the vent. Went on down with the hood. Big old hood, it comes crashing down. <laughs> Chips. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Hunter Detailed Pictures, financing and shipping, it's all available. Just go to maplemotors.com, hit subscribe, that helps me out quite a bit. Any other questions, 615-822-4444 is our office number. Thanks for watching.